In this video, we will be going through congenital heart defect known as Tetralogy of Hello. This comes under the congenital heart defects with decreased pulmonary blood flow or cyanotic defects. Before we look into Tetralogy of Hello, we first need to understand basic heart anatomy. In a normal heart, there are four chambers with two atria and two ventricles. The right side of heart, that is right atrium and right ventricle, contain deoxygenated blood whereas left side of heart that is left atrium and left ventricle contain oxygenated blood. The oxygenated blood from whole body reaches the right atrium through inferior and superior vena cava. Then it passes down into the right ventricle through tricuspid valve. The blood from the right ventricle flows through the pulmonary artery and gets oxygenated in the lungs. From the lungs the oxygenated blood returns back to the left atrium through pulmonary veins passes down into the left ventricle through bicuspid or mitral valve and then the oxygenated blood from the left ventricle passes through the aorta. The aorta then helps blood circulate to the entire body. In Tetralogy of Fellow, classically there are four defects including ventricular septal defect, pulmonic stenosis, overriding aorta and the right ventricular hypertrophy. The VSD means a hole in the ventricular septum Pulmonic stenosis means narrowing of pulmonary valve or right ventricular outflow tract. Overriding aorta means where the aorta is positioned directly over the ventricular septal defect. And right ventricular hypertrophy means thickening of the wall of right ventricle. We will discuss in detail in the pathophysiology of tetralogy of fellow about what happens in this disorder. But first we will look into the causes of tetralogy of fellow. Usually the cause is unknown. The risk factors include drinking alcohol during pregnancy, viral illness during pregnancy like rubella, poor nutrition during pregnancy, maternal age of more than 40 years, parents having tetralogy of flow. Now we come to the pathophysiology of tetralogy of flow. The deoxygenated blood returns to the right atrium and then flows into the right ventricle. The outflow of blood from the right ventricle to the lungs is restricted due to the narrowing of pulmonary valve or pulmonic stenosis, making the right ventricle to push harder, ultimately causing right ventricular hypertrophy. All this leads to increased pressure inside the right ventricle, which forces the blood to shunt from right ventricle to the left ventricle through the VST or ventricular septal defect. Due to this, unoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood mix together. Since blood flow to the lungs is restricted due to pulmonary stenosis, maximum volume of mixed blood enters the overriding aorta and reaches the systemic circulation, causing cyanosis or bluish discoloration of the mucous membranes, nail beds, and skin. Now to compensate for unoxygenated blood and to deliver more oxygen to the tissues, body increases RBC count, a condition known as polysthemia which makes blood more viscous increasing chances of thrombophilipides, embolism and cerebrovascular disease. Now we will look into the signs and symptoms of Tetralogy of Fellow. The most significant symptom seen in Tetralogy of Fellow is cyanosis. The degree of cyanosis depends on the severity of the pulmonic stenosis. Infants with mild pulmonic stenosis may be pink at rest and become cyanosed on crying or during activity. In severe pulmonic stenosis, however, the cyanosis can occur even at rest. Disney on exertion and to relieve this, the child may assume squatting position. Clubbing of fingers and toenails usually occurs by 1-2 to two years of age. Clubbing is usually caused by chronically low blood levels of oxygen. There is a characteristic systolic murmur that is often moderate in intensity. There may be acute episodes of cyanosis and hypoxia called blue spells or dead spells. Dead spells occur when infant's oxygen requirement exceeds the blood supply, usually during crying or after feeding. The infant becomes dysneic, restless, cyanotic and may even gasp for breath. Patients are at risk of emboli, seizures and loss of consciousness or sudden death after a dead spell. Now how can we diagnose the condition of tetralogy of fellow? It includes auscultation to listen to the harsh systolic murmur. Echocardiography shows the ventricular septal defect, overriding aorta, and the pulmonic stenosis. 
Chess X-ray will show characteristic boot-shaped heart because of the right ventricular hypertrophy. The cardiac catheterization can also be used to diagnose the tetralogy of the lobe. We will now look into the treatment of tetralogy of the lobe. Palliative shunt is for in parents who cannot undergo primary repair. This procedure increases pulmonary blood flow and increases the oxygen saturation. The preferred procedure is modified Blaylock toxic shunt operation. In this procedure, a connection is established between a branch of pulmonary artery and a branch of aorta. Blood in the aorta at higher pressure flows into the pulmonary artery at lower pressure. This increases the blood flow to the lungs and improves the oxygen content of the blood. The next option is the complete repair. This is reserved for infants older than 6 months. The surgery involves widening of the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary valve is widened or replaced and the passage from right ventricle is enlarged. This improves blood flow to the lungs and improves oxygenation. It also involves closing the VSD using a patch. This prevents mixing of oxygenated and unoxygenated blood. Fixing these two defects, that is pulmonic stenosis and the ventricular septal defect, also resolves the other two defects. Now the right ventricle no longer has to work harder and the right ventricular hypertrophy is reversed. Fixing the VSD means that only oxygen-rich blood will flow out of the right ventricle into the aorta. The management of TET spell involves placing the infant in a knee chest position which improves the blood flow to the lungs, giving supplemental oxygen and providing IV fluids for volume expansion. If the TET spell continues, standard medical therapy includes morphine, phenylephrine and beta blockers like propranolol. Now the nursing management of tetralogy of fellow. The first nursing diagnosis will be impaired gas exchange related to altered pulmonary blood flow as evidenced by cyanosis. The nursing interventions will include positioning the child in semi-upright position as it facilitates breathing, suctioning oral and nasal cavities if required, and monitoring oxygen saturation and administering supplemental oxygen if needed. Administering bronchodilators if prescribed. The second nursing diagnosis will be activity intolerance related to an imbalance between oxygen supply and demand, as evidenced by need to rest after a short period of activity. The nursing interventions include providing rest periods between care, providing toys and games for quiet play, explaining to parents the need to conserve energy and encourage rest. The next nursing diagnosis will be risk of infection related to hospitalization. The nursing interventions will include observing child for fever and early signs of infection, observing strict asepsis when providing care to the patient, and administering prophylactic antibiotics if prescribed. If the child is planned for surgery, provide preoperative and postoperative care. Thank you for watching. That was all about the tetralogy of below. Subscribe to the EOTA classes, especially for neat aspirants 11th to 12th with medical stream and those who are pursuing BSC nursing. The link is in description.